welcome to this video from in 28 minutes thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms udemy safari and pact let's welcome our lead instructor rangarao karanam in this video we'll be talking about modularity what is modularity and how you can achieve modularity how does a modular system look like let's look at that in this specific video what you are looking at is a specific implementation of a microservices architecture let's go a few years back let's say a decade back typically instead of having these many microservices and these many common components and having common infrastructure there would just be one application which is providing all these functionality that was what is called a monolith Typically, when we were doing monolith architectures, we just built applications. We did not worry about creating common components or having common infrastructure components. As we moved on from the monolith of architecture to service-oriented architecture to the microservices architecture, we started taking things out. We started breaking things out. So instead of building a single application, we built it as a set of microservices and we take all the common components and put them out. We have common infrastructure components which are created, which helps us in providing the technical capabilities for all these microservices. And this is what is called a modular architecture. Modular architecture is all about separation of concerns. Identify a concern which can be hand provided by a separate component and create a component for it for example in here we have a common component for security it handles all the low level details how are the user details stored how are user authentication details stored how are user authorization details stored and it provides a consistent interface to the microservices so all that this microservice needs to ask the security component is does this user have this role it would say yes or no it does not, the microservice one does not need to worry about the lower level details. Similar to that is a logging component. As soon as it makes use of the logging component, microservice one does not need to worry about where the centralized logging server is present, whether it needs to do more auditing or things like that. In a modular architecture, you try and create separate components with a clear responsibility. Thereby, Whenever I need to create a new microservice, it becomes much, much more easier. Let's take an example of a microservices architecture. Right? This microservice wants to check whether the user has the right credentials, whether the user has access to specific thing. What does it do? It uses the security component. It wants to log something. What does it do? It uses the logging component. The microservice 1 wants to find out where the microservice 3 is deployed. What does it do? It talks to the naming server. It asks, where is the microservice 3 deployed? And it gets the answer. It's deployed at a specific location. All these things that you are seeing on your screen in here are components. What we have in here are two kinds of components. Security and logging are more technical kind of components. What would happen? Is these are like for example in Java terms these are jars the microservice one would make use of the jars and implement the functionality the other kind of components are the infrastructure components so these are like applications which are deployed on a specific server these are common to all the microservices that's why we call them components these are more like the infrastructure components so Typically, components is a term which is used related to something which is independently reusable. If I want to use the security component, all that I need to do is declare a dependency to it on my POM. If I want to make use of the naming server, all that I need to do is to configure something in my application properties. The thing about these components is they have a well-defined interface. Using them is not really complex microservices architectures and component based architectures are built around common components the advantage that these common components provides 
is separation of concerns. This microservice does not need to worry about security or logging or things like that. It does not need to worry about how to find another microservice. All that it need to do is talk to the naming server. It does not need to worry about centralized logging. It takes care of its own logging and the centralized logging would provide a view where I can see what's happening with all the microservices. These components help us in building very modular applications. In this video, we talked about what is a component. We talked about two kinds of components, technical components like jars or infrastructure components like a naming server, a centralized logging server. The components help us in implementing microservices architectures or implementing components based on architectures and these help in improving the modularity of an application. These help in creating highly maintainable architectures. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is what do you want to learn next? Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.